Hello, this is Joe McGee. You know, we've been doing seminars across the country for years. Seminars on marriage, parenting, men, money, and family. We want to encourage you to email us and let us know if this podcast has helped you. Or maybe you have joined us live at one of our seminars. If you have a testimony, you just want to tell us what God's doing in your life, please email us at mail at joemcgeeministries.com or you can contact us through our website, joemcgeeministries.com. There you will find helpful articles and tools to help you grow in God, your marriage, and your family. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tips for Living. Common sense stuff to tell your kids before they leave home. I have a line I've used all the time. By the time your child's 18, it would be really good if they were able to do these things. The whole idea when God gave his kids, the whole idea was to train them up so they can go out of the house and they can be an adult. You're trying to train them up for adulthood. And so you hopefully they can do certain things. So this was managing your money. And, boy, this is a shock for a lot of parents uh, because sometimes kids don't know. What do you, what do, you do when you need money? Ask my dad. What, what do you need? What do you do when you need money? I ask my mom. Hey, you got 20 bucks? You got 10 bucks? Eventually, the goal is to make you an adult so you earn your own money. You don't just get it from your parents. So this is called managing your money. By age 18, it would be really ideal if you were able to do these things. Number one, by age 18, you should have opened a checking or savings account with the money you've earned working somewhere. So I tell kids, you know, I, I'll, there are certain things. Uh, I gave my kids an allowance, but I gave them opportunity everywhere to do extra jobs. Uh, you want to do this? Hey, I'll pay you this. You want to do this? I'll pay you this. If you don't, it's up to you. But give them a way to make their own money. And as soon as they start making money, open them a, a, a bank account because they need to learn about the bank. Hey, guys, you're going to be using the bank till Jesus comes. You know what this bank does? You know why it's here? You know how it, you know how it makes money? It makes money off your money. So be aware of what's going on with this. Number two, have you made a withdrawal from an automatic teller machine? Now, the kids have seen you do it. Do they know how to do it? I mean, by the time your kid can drive, can they go to ATM machine? Hey, can you go get $10 cash or $50 cash? That amount of money. Well, go, and my kids are in college, two of them that lived out of state. Do you not know how to use the ATM machine? No, no, I never learned. Well, I'm going to have to teach you. So hopefully they can use an ATM machine in case they need cash. Number three, know how to check your account balances and transactions uh, at any time. And, of course, you can do that with computers now. You just get your bank number and your statement. You can go online in just a few seconds. You pull your bank account up and know when it's either broke or you've got some money in there. And so you need kind of thing that make sure you have that budget all the time. Know how to purchase a, a, a money order in case of an emergency. There's some places that won't take cash. The only thing they'll take is a money order. Now, I've dealt with things, mailing stuff, uh, uh, UPS, FedEx stuff. They won't take anything but a money order. They guarantee that that's, that check's not going to bounce. So I have to teach my kids, go down here. You can buy one at our grocery store. You can go down here and buy one at the post office. Hey, I need a money order, and it's, it's a legitimate piece of paper. So teach them how, how, how it works and when they're going to know to need one. Next, know the difference between various types of financial institutions. There's the difference between a bank, a savings and loan, a credit union. They all have money, but they all function very different. You know the difference. So uh, my kids were usually always with us. We went to the bank or the credit union. What are you doing? I'm doing this. I'm making a deposit. I'm making a withdrawal. And every time we get a piece of paper, especially if we got money out, they would give us a statement. Mr. Gee, you had $100 when you came here. You now have $23 left because you took some money out. So you need to be aware of money. Money flows. It's like water. It's always moving. It's either coming towards you or it's going away from you. But money never sits still. It's doing something all the time. You need to know uh, uh, how, to, how to keep a file or categories, you know. Uh, you need to know how, how long do I keep uh, receipts. You know, and I tell people all the time, well, seven years is the limit for the tax thing. So you need to have your taxes for the last seven years, put them in the file somewhere. Well, what is this? What's the, my last seven years of my tax statements? How much I made, where it went, how much I earned, so forth. And I've done it. I usually do it longer. I usually keep it 14 years in case something comes up. Hey, what happened back in 1902? Well, let me pull my file out and I'll show you. And so it, it's called stewardship. The thing you steward, the, what you steward the best, God will increase. If you don't steward it, it's not going to increase. God's got an accountability like that. Um, I like this. Know uh, what people keep in a safe deposit box, and you visited one. Now, we always had one at our local bank, 
And what I kept there mostly was uh, for years was uh, I kept uh, my will, my last will and testament. What is it? Well, if I were to pass away all of a sudden, unexpected, because, you know, death never sends a notice. If I were to die all of a sudden, you know, what am I, what am my family going to do? Well, I've got a will and I've got insurance. And so everything that was critical, I kept in a safe deposit box and they can walk down there. Hey, we need, we need Joe's safe deposit key. And you walk in this vault, you got the key noped up and they pull that box out. What's in here? Well, my last will and testament, my insurance policies, how much I've got, uh, who gets what, where I always kept it. Just, it's just so simple and it gives you a whole lot better life when you know where your money is and where it's going. So be able to do that. Uh, you need to take part in family shopping. You know, everything from food to furniture, uh, learn about prices. Uh, I'm going to tell the kids, well, this, this, this oatmeal's cheap. Well, no, well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. What, what's, look on the side of the oatmeal box. Uh, how many ounces is that? Well, so many. Well, then divide that by the dollar amount, and you realize that's not cheap. It's just in a bigger box. You think you're getting a deal sometimes when you're not getting a deal at all. So how much is it per ounce, per can, you know, uh, per case? What is it? you got to learn how to think. you got to be a mathematician when you go to the grocery store to learn how to shop. Um, I used to tell them this, and know how to search for a good apartment. You know, can you afford it? And one of the things I did when I was a school administrator I'd uh, match up my seniors, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, and I would give them a salary. At the time, the average income was like 20000 a year. I said, we're going to assume you both have a job. you got 40000 a year. Find yourself an apartment. Uh, find yourself a car. Uh, get Go buy groceries you know, for the month. How, you find out how, it costs, how much it costs to live because most people don't have a clue what it costs to live Every day, lot bill, water bill, gasoline, car payment, apartment payment. It, money, there's money going somewhere all the time, so you need to be aware of what that is and how to steward it better. So get, learn how to do that. Uh, have, a de- have developed with advice from your parents a sample budget. You need to have a budget. Um, how do you do that? Well, if I give you $10 a week, can you live off that? Good not. No. Well, <laughs> what can you do with it? And so some people, like I said, we went to Bible school. Well, a lot of guys that had owned businesses are now in Bible school, and they're working three minimum wage jobs and eating a lot of romaine noodles. Why? Because we can't afford anything else. And so you got to learn that life costs money. And so you need to make plans. How are you going to get this money? Where's it going to come from? When you get it, how are you going to spend it? You don't just go out and just unload everything on a night at the movies and, and a lot of hamburgers, you know. What are you going to do with this thing? Uh, you know how the mortgages and loans work, including the total amount of interest. Uh, they think, well, that's a great price in the house. Well, no, what's the interest? And I remember for years, you know, credit cards. And so when I got me a credit card, that doesn't mean anything because most of those credit cards are 20 to 22% interest. I mean, you're going to go broke for using that thing, especially people get credit cards and four or five of them. Next thing you know, they're, they're making a minimum payment of $10 a month. Why? Well, that credit card, they want, they want that company want you to stay in debt because they're making money off the interest you're paying for that. And so you need to keep those things paid off as quick as you can and just avoid debt altogether if you can, man. It's, just, it's something, it'll mess with you. Um, what kinds of insurance have you got? Uh, health insurance, life insurance, auto insurance. People don't even think about that when they get married. You know, your kid leaves home to get married. And they'll come back within a month and Dad, did you have health insurance? Yes. Did you have car insurance? Yes. Did you have life insurance? Yes. <laughs> and they realize, man, you never told us about that. Well, you didn't ask. I was too busy working, paying bills. You know, you didn't ask. So you're going to need lots of insurance, and you know how to shop for it so somebody doesn't take you to the cleaners and say something you really don't need. So know how much you need and where it's going to go. I like this, and become aware of how unnecessary penalty charges are uh, when you pay your bills late. Uh, and we've all done that. All of a sudden, man, the, uh, especially some credit card companies, uh, it's not due every 30 days. It's due every 27 days. And what they're doing, they're making money off you because you're paying the 18 to 22% interest on that amount. And so you just made a minimum payment. But you're going in debt further every payday. I mean, every month, you're going deeper in debt. No, I made payments. No, you didn't make enough. You're going in debt. You need to know how that interest thing works and how they're making money off of it. Know about credit ratings, how they're compiled, and how they affect your borrowing power. And so I always tell people, you'll be able to call your credit company, and they'll spit it out to you pretty quick. What's my credit rating? They'll give it to you. Well, based on that number, uh, it determines a lot of things. Whatever you, your credit rating is, it depends on the percentage of a loan you can get, a uh, car payment you're going to get, a house you want to buy. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's telling them. I have proven I can handle this much money. I've proven I can't handle this much money. Well, that's going to cost you eventually. So you know how that thing works. 
Uh, understand that casinos and racetracks stay in business. The gambler always loses over the long term. Now, we've got wonderful casinos here in Oklahoma, uh, just everywhere. I mean, you, just huge. And parking lots are packed, I mean, every day, every weekend. And it's incredible. Thing. What are they doing? Well, they're gambling. Who's making money? The casino. <laughs> Not the people going into the casino. The casino's making money. So stay away from those places, man. It's not going to work. It just doesn't work. Uh, you discussed with your parents about loaning money to a family member or a friend or relative. And I've told my kids all the life, don't loan money to anybody. If you're thirsty, I'll give you water. If you're hungry, I'll feed you. And if you're pissed, I'll come visit you. But I'm not going to loan you any money. Because, man, the worst thing you'll ever do is start doing loans with family members because there's a relationship. And and they'll take advantage of you. And you're going to end up in trouble financially. Why? I loan money to somebody I never should have loaned money to. We just don't. Just don't ever loan money. Hey, you need a meal? I'll go buy you one, but I'm not loaning you any money. Hey, you need something? Hey, uh, I'll, I'm going to make you a payment this month, but I'm not going to loan you any money. I'll do something nice for you. Don't get into the money loaning thing because it's going to burn you bad. Next, I like this. You've made a habit of tithing and giving money to worthwhile organizations. I tell people, I cannot afford to not tithe. People say, what's the tithe? Well, it's 10% of your income. Uh, Old Testament and New Testament. Even Jesus taught on the tithe. What do you need to do? Well, I live on an alien planet. Satan is the god of this world. He steals, kills, and destroys. Uh, I'm not. I'm not on this planet. I'm going to another place, but I'm temporarily living here. So I better know how it works. So I want to make sure I'm a tither. If I'm a tither, that allows God to get involved with my money. Uh, that's what Jericho was. There are ten major cities in the Promised Land. Jericho was the first one. God said, "Jericho belongs to me. Don't take anything because it belongs to me." I'm going to give you Jericho so you can give it back to me, and I'll partake of everything that's in there. And so God blesses through the tithe. So I tell people, put some seed in the ground. You know, God didn't ask for – God's not like a credit union. He's not going to ask for a credit card. He's not going to ask for 22%. God only asked for 10 and it works out really, really good. So learn about money, how it works, uh, uh, where your interest is going, who you're paying, who you're not paying. Uh, the first thing you learn when you start getting out of debt – I tell people, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to start with the biggest payment I've got. We're going to, I got to get rid of that one. So if I've got a payment that's all of a sudden $88 a month, and I've got several that are $15 a month, I'm going for the $88 a month payment, and then I'm going to double up that month. What are you going to do? I'm going to start sacrificing. I got to pay this thing off. I got to pay this thing off. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing except the lover. Boy, that's just a great standard to have. And by the way, guys, when you talk about the tithing thing, I've got a great book called Family Finances. I've got a great series on DVD, on, on CD, uh, on about money. And you, you need to learn it because uh, it's in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. God teaches about money, how to handle it. God's a God of stewardship. What I take care of, he'll give back to me. So it's, we've got some great teaching on the tithe. Man, it'll really bless you a lot. So go to Joe McGee Ministries and, uh, and just download that or buy that stuff right online. It will really bless you. So, Father, I pray, give everybody that's listening today liberal wisdom to be wise stewards over what you've given them, that you might increase it and not decrease it. In Jesus' name, amen, guys. Thanks for listening. Hey, thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we are here to help you get there. Make sure and go to our website, joemiggyministries.com. We've got all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.